Hi, I'm Martin Purdy. I purchased a smart bench back in June 2021 and I started my own business, Gifts in Wood. Seeing as I'm local to the guys, they've asked me if I would come in and share with you how I use smart bench to make projects, which you'll be able to follow along and make yourself. Let's get started. But did I smile a bit more this time? You smile so good. Oh, there we go now. Hello everybody, it's Marty, and in this video we're going to be making a flight case to suit your Z head. Okay, so this is the world's most transportable CNC. We're going to make it really easy now for you to take the components apart and move the most vulnerable parts. Our flight case is going to be constructed around the protective foams that come with your Z head when you purchase your smart bench. So if like me, you recycled your foams, you don't have to worry because you can contact Yeti directly and purchase some more. So our flight case is going to have an aperture for our console to sit in the top, nice and safely. The Z head is also going to have an aperture then for a stylus kit if you own one. Two spindles and then your basic tools like your collet spanner and your Allen key. So to finish this flight case, we will have a simple clip system. Okay, so four clips a couple of plastic protective corners and a simple flight case handle. Now we're going to give you access to this file, which the link will be down in the description below. Okay, and you are obviously free to amend this to suit your needs. If you don't own, say, two spindles or a stylus kit, you could change that space then for something more utilizable to yourself. If you'd like to see a tutorial video of how we made your flight case, there will be a link down below, but we're going to give you a quick overview of the file now. Let's go over to the laptop. So here is the file in Vetrix VCarb. So what we've got here are some very basic components of a top and a base. They are symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter which one is which. This is going to be the front and the back of our flight case, and this will be the two end components. This particular one here, I've designed separately away from the box making gadget, which is a central divider. And I've pinched a section from Yeti's spindle holder. So that is going to sit into these rebates here along with our central divider, and that's gonna make the area where our Z head is stored. And this particular side then will be the area of our spindles. So I'm gonna very briefly show you that as a preview of a cut file. So there we go, so there's all the components. So that was an overview of the file that we've made using the box making gadget. If you'd like to see a full rundown, then please follow the link in the description below. Anyway, let's get to cutting. So once I've loaded the file, um, I will let the smart bench check all the G-code for any errors. That will ensure that my job is within the parameters of the machine movements. Then I will go to the map screen. And when I'm at the map screen, I'm looking to double check that my home location is in the correct position I want. And I'm also looking, it will show me the size of my workpiece. So to make sure that's orientated correctly on the bench to the X and Y, and also to make sure that it replicates roughly what I'm expecting the file. So we just finished the cut. Um, everything seems to have worked out perfectly. So very briefly, we've got the front and the back sections. We've got the two ends and the central divider and the top and bottom. Okay, so just a, just a note, when I orientated these parts on the sheet, I came quite close to this and we had a touch of MDF breakout, which could have easily sort of disturbed the X-beam and compromised the project but we've been very lucky in this instance. So it'd just be worth thinking about how you're orientating your parts on your sheet to get you know, the right level of finish and keep everything nice and safe. So at this stage, we've got all of the parts still connected to the sheet via the tabs. We've used an off cut of our MDF and just check to make sure of our pockets are allowanced correctly to accept our 12 mil material. So I'm gonna use a multi-tool now and I'm gonna relieve all these parts before moving on to clearing the tabs then with a flush cut bit in a router. Um, and then we'll, we'll move on to the assembly. So yeah, looking forward to it. So for anybody that doesn't know what I mean by a flush cutting writer bit, so it comprises of two parts, 
which the first part is a bearing, which will sit along the flat part of our stock. And then we've got two teeth set half inch apart. And these are gonna go round and trim against our material. So just as an example, this would be the remnants of our tab. This bearing is gonna sit along here and then the cutter is going to come around and cut the remnants of that tab away, perfectly flush. So we're gonna get these pieces out and get them all stacked, piled, ready then just to have all the tabs cut off. So before we get started, it's worth mentioning that if you're cleaning up any smaller parts, it's always worth using some quick clamps just to make sure you hold that part in place firmly. Okay, to ensure that while you're using anything like a palm router or a multi-tool, a jigsaw, any appliance like that, that you've got your workpiece firmly held. Okay, so the last thing to consider then before we start cutting is we're gonna use some EM166 rated eyewear. We're gonna put on some rather snazzy branded earmuffs um, and a good quality FFP3 face mask, okay? Because we're gonna be cutting in a closed environment, it's just worth it then to um, protect ourselves from any dust inhalation. tidy work area. Okay, so this is the part that I've personally been looking forward to. We're gonna take these components now and we're gonna assemble them into a box. If this doesn't go together, I'm gonna to cry. So these finger tabs are working out to be a little bit tight. It just goes to show that each machine is individual. I set these parameters to work on my own personal machine, which is 0.15 allowance on the box creator gadget. Where I've cut this now on a different machine, it's just working out to be a little bit tight, but we can get away with it. We're just working through it nice and gently. Just realized I forgot to check which was top and which was bottom. <laughs> So now we have our flight case assembled as a cube. I've added a band clamp, which is helping to pull everything together, being as the joints are so tight. I'm gonna add some screw fixings underneath the flight case corner caps, which are our plastic protectors then that are gonna go on each corner. So I'll hide some of the fixings as best as I can. And then from that stage, we're gonna run a ball nose around all of the corners on this case to make it easier to handle. And then we're gonna cut the 60 mil down to form the lid. So let's get on with it. So I know it said previously the next step would be fitting the flight case protective corners. However, I've missed the step, which is using a rail saw, we're gonna cut all the way around our box to separate the lid then from the main body. So once we've done that, we'll have two separate sections and I'll fix the flight case protective corners then to all of the edges. Now I just want to say that if you don't own a rail saw, you could use something like a table saw. Alternatively, you could even use a hand saw to perform this motion. You don't need any specialized tooling, okay? There we go. So there is our two components all set up. We've got our lid and then we've got our main case. Okay, so as you can see, this is the compartment side to fit our spindles and our stylus kit along with the associated tools. And this is the main case then for your Z head. And with a couple of rebates then to help you locate, this is your box now all fully finished. So we're gonna fit the flight case corners, we're gonna fit some clips, we're gonna fit some handles, and then we're gonna put a Z head and all the associated tools in with it and see if it's light enough that we can even pick it up. <laughs> So the final part of this project now is to fix on all of the accessories. So just as a recap, we're going to fit a flight case handle on the top for easy manual handling. And then the final part then will be fitting these clips. So we're going to put four clips on this box, two on each end, nice and easy. So let's get started. Da 
Bye. Well, thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember that a link to the file for this flight case is down in the description below. Um, it'd be really interesting to see if anyone makes one of these and how you modify it to suit your own needs. Please feel free to modify this file to make exactly what you want out of it. Um, I'm really surprised that this is the first known flight case specifically for a Z head out there. Um, I thought someone might have beat me to the punch. So if you have an idea on something that you would like me to make, please drop a comment below and remember to subscribe and hopefully we'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much.